You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own microwave oven electric timer. In our electroplating video, I used this electronic timer for it to time how long the reaction would be taking place so that I could go do stuff elsewhere as it continued on itself. And so recently, I had a comment in that video asking me how I created it. And so in my high voltage from a microwave video, we took apart a microwave to get to its high voltage transformer. And so we're going to be turning this into an electronic timer that determines how long electricity will be running through an appliance. Okay, so here's one of those number pads from the microwave. Looking at the back here, you can see three wires, a blue one, a black one, and a white one. The other two input wires looks like it's these two pink ones down here. Following those pink wires from the board, we can see that they both go to this momentary switch here. This means that when the door is shut, this is active and the timer is able to work. So to bypass this, we're going to want to disconnect these two purple wires and then just solder them together. Now looking at the board again, there's only one more place that energy could be going into it, and that is through these three wires here. If you notice over here, you'll see that the blue wire and the white wire are connected up to this light bulb. This likely means that that's going to be our mains voltage wire, so let's go ahead and snip that. Now that we have everything separated up, go ahead and strip the ends of all these wires. Since these two pink wires need to be connected, for now let's just twist together the metal contacting parts so that they form a nice secure bond. I have these two wires connected up to mains power, and I have them plugged into the switch over here so that it won't turn on until I'm ready. Now to begin my testing, I'm going to connect this black wire to mains, and this white wire also up to mains. Now be careful for this next part, because when we flip this on, all these wires are going to be live with the current from the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and flip on my multimeter, and I'm going to turn it to the 200 volt AC option. And I'm going to go ahead and flip on the power. Now I would replicate the exact process I did on my other one with this one, except for I've just discovered that the start button on this one is actually not working. So I'm going to have to show you guys the rest on this one. But the first part we did here still should work fine. Okay, so again, know that we're about to turn on mains voltage. So when we go ahead and flip it on after connecting those wires up, the microwave oven should start right up. Now what we're going to want to do is go ahead and set the cooking time that you would normally do on a regular microwave for a few minutes. Now when we hit start, this is going to give us one minute to go ahead and figure out which connections need to go where. Now you're going to want to take your multimeter and measure the voltage across different points. How this should be working is that right here is a relay. And when you set the timer, this chip sends current through the relay, thus giving another path for the current from the wall to go through, so it can go through there as well. So go ahead and take that multimeter and measure the voltages across different points. On the two relay points, you shouldn't be getting that much volts. As you can see here though, from the relay point to one of the input wires that we were originally connecting the wall voltage to, we're getting around 120 volts AC. We're going to want to attach one wire from the relay, and then the other output wire is going to be another wire attached to that same part of the wall. The other tab on the relay needs to be attached to the other input wire. That may have been a bit confusing, so let me go ahead and draw out what I mean onto this. So this is going to be the entire circuit behind it, so we're just going to call that the microcontroller. Here are two AC inputs that we're putting in. The microcontroller controls a relay over here. How a relay functions is that the microcontroller is going to send a current through it for an amount of time that then makes a circuit work, because just as a switch, it moves the little needle magnetically to complete the contacts for the circuit. So then we're going to need one end of the relay attached to one end of our AC current in, and the other end of the relay attached to the other end. And this would give us a complete circuit. Now, since we just don't want to short circuit it like that, we're not actually going to connect it directly up to this other end. Instead, we're going to have a wire coming off of the tab, another wire coming over here, and then these wires are going to go to a plug outlet that we have nearby. And then that plug outlet can also have a ground cable connected to it. As you can see here, that's exactly what I did here. So here I have one end of the relay attached to one of the inputs going in, and the other end of the relay attached to a wire going down here to a plug outlet I installed. The other end of the plug outlet wire is going to the other AC input to the microcontroller here. So when you have all the wires connected and you've measured the voltage across the two points that are going to be connected up to this, and if that voltage equals 120 volts, that means you should be good. That 120 volt reading should only come when you have the timer set and the timer counting down, just as with the microwave going on. When you have checked all that and it works, go ahead and solder all the wires together that you need to and take caps like this in order to ensure no short circuiting. And now that we have all these caps on, it should be a lot safer than it was before. And notice up here, I have the other two wires that were coming out of the input board, though on the other board it looked different, the principle is still the same, you're going to want to connect those wires together. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example of a microwave oven door. Looking at the board, we have these two wires again that were connected to a momentary switch. Go ahead and twist these two wires together again, just as the last one. Now when you see this, this may not look familiar to either of the two microwave ovens we were just doing. However, looking at it, we can see one end of the relay is attached through a wire to this plug here, and the other end of the 
relay is just an open port. This goes along with our circuit we were seeing earlier. So let's go ahead and quickly clear up all the excess wires that aren't needed here to try to make it a little bit easier to handle. I have the shoot off coming from one end of the relay that's connected over to these pins here connected up to AC mains voltage. I don't believe these other two wires have any purpose, so I'm just going to snip them off. This leaves us with one more wire going into the board, and that's the black one. I could connect the black to the black and the white to the white, but the colors here don't really matter because we're dealing with AC. So the other end of the relay should have 120 volts between the black wire here. Okay, so assuming I got all that correct, when we flip it on, we should see this LED screen turn on. So now let's go ahead and measure some voltages. So with the circuit on, but without me actually inputting a time for the microwave to be cooking, we should find that there are zero volts between this black wire and the wire coming out of the relay. The multimeter is picking up around 3.7, but that's close enough for this purpose. And so I assume that to be a property of alternating current that's causing the multimeter to read it that way. Now when I input a time on the microwave, say two minutes on this, I heard a slight snap that sounded like the relay being activated. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so now when we measure between that point on the relay and the black wire, we should see there are 120 volts. And as you can see, it works out fine. And so that's how you would do it for a microwave that looks like that. It's practically the exact same thing, it just looks a little bit different, and you need to figure out which wires you're going to be using and which wires you're not going to be using. In all cases, there are just going to be two input wires to the circuit board here, and then also these two wires that control just for that momentary switch for the circuit board to be operating correctly. Now take a look at this relay here, you'll see that the mains current that powers the microwave oven transformer in this is a big hefty wire to handle lots of current. This black wire obviously couldn't handle that current, but this big thick black wire was connected up to that little black wire. So what you'd want to do is take that big thick black wire and connect it to here, and that would be the other end of your terminal that would go off to the plug outlet that we were showing with the previous one. That way your microwave oven timer could be handling a lot more current than what you could previously get. The relays will also have a maximum current, so if you can, you're going to want to try and see what the maximum current is that can be going through your relay. Now this, I think, is extremely useful to have. I use my soldering iron a lot, and in the process, sometimes I'll forget to turn it off. However, by having my soldering iron plugged into this guy, as you can see, it will only stay on as long as the timer is running. And when the timer turns off, it'll make this sound for a few seconds, and the soldering iron will be turned off. This is so, so useful because it eliminates risk of fire starting from leaving your soldering iron plugged in. And by setting it to like 30 minutes while you're doing a soldering project, it'll be sure to turn it off for you when you're done if you can't remember to turn it off. And you can leave this device constantly plugged in because when it's idling like this, it draws very little power. And for mine at least, it'll even turn off this screen when you haven't been using it for a while. And when you're ready to use it again, just click the button and it'll turn back on. So now you know how to make your very own microwave oven timer. Thank you all so much for watching the video. And although it wasn't as flashy as my usual videos, I still think that this is a great project to build and a wonderful tool to have in your lab. If you'd like to learn how to make something using electricity or science, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next week, be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own EMP generator.